watercolour granulation. Is it a good thing or a bad thing? And how do you use it in your own paintings? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. If we haven't met before, my name is Michelle and on my channel you'll find art tips and techniques, social media and business training for artists. So please do subscribe and if you hit the bell notification, you'll get notified every time I have a new video for you. So what is granulation and is it a good thing or a bad thing? Now paints that granulate are paints that have slightly larger pigments in. Now I often see beginners and they're sort of having a bit of a panic and they've applied their paint, what they think they applied it nice and smoothly and all of a sudden they've got all these little grainy bits as it's drying and they're having a big old panic and they often say, well, you know, what did I do wrong? Well, the truth is they didn't do anything wrong. It just happens that they uh, selected a paint that granulates. So across the brands, it tends to be the same sort of colours that granulate. I'm going to point the camera down in a minute and explain more about that. I'm going to show you exactly which colours granulate and which colours don't. After that, I'm going to look at the, uh, the ways that you can use granulation. I'm going to have a look at the latest painting that I made. And I'm going to show you how um, three ways in which I used granulation to enhance the painting. So is granulation actually a good thing or a bad thing? Well, the truth is it's uh, both and neither. So um, if you're looking to uh, have an area of paint that's really kind of smooth with no, uh, no texturing whatsoever, then you're not going to want to choose a granulating colour. However, if you're using texture, then uh, granulating colours are your friends. And uh, like I said, I'm going to show you three ways which you can use granulating colours. And do stay tuned to the end because I have a bonus tip for you that's really important of how to apply granulating colours properly to your painting. Now here we are looking down at my um, drawing board and I've got my paints here. So I'm going to go through uh, four basic categories of colour. So I'm not going to look at secondary colours because they're made from the primary colours anyway. So we're going to look firstly at um, primary colours and then we're going to have a look at earth colours. So I'm going to go through the yellows first. So here is my palette of yellows. Um, most of the yellows will give you granulation of some kind, so they're not really what I would consider um, highly granulating colours, but most of the cadmium colours will granulate. So cadmiums I would categorise more as being sort of um, semi-opaque colours, but you will get some granulation in those colours. Now you're not really going to see it until you add something like a blue or a darker colour to it, but you will get um, some granulation with those colours. I've got, what else have I got here? Naples yellow is an incredibly um, opaque colour, so perhaps not so much. That one here is a cadmium yellow deep. Again, you'll get some granulation happening with that one, which is, um, you can see it a little bit there perhaps, but it's probably best seen, um, like I said, with some darks in it. Then you've got sort of, you've got things like um, transparent yellow and quinacridone gold. Now those are transparent colours, so you're not going to get granulation with those. And then the one I've got here is yellow ochre. This is probably the only yellow which I would say is a heavily granulating colour. Um, and for most people, yellow ochre would be considered an earth colour. I've got it here in my, um, my yellows because it's just easier for me to arrange my colour mixing that way. I hope you can see a little bit of that granulation happening right there. So let's move on to the reds. Now, um, it's a lot easier with the reds. You've got sort of three um, categories. You've got things like pinks. So these colours here, um, I've got quinacridone rose there and opera rose here. Those are not really uh, granulating colours. They will be quite transparent colours. Um, things like alizarin crimson you may get a bit more granulation with, but generally speaking, the pinks don't granulate. The slight exception here is potter's pink, which again is another semi-opaque. And then I've got cadmium reds here. Um, just like the yellows, you will get some granulation with those cadmium colours. But the ones that you're going to find that granulate the most are what I would call the warm reds. So um, these would be um, things like um, Venetian red, like this one, and colours like red oxide. So there's the Venetian red. My red oxide is actually in with my, uh, my neutrals and my browns. But um, those warm reds, so um, any red that's kind of terracotta-like, so you've got Venetian red, um, you've got red oxide, which is um, often um, often in brands you get a colour called light red, which is a terracotta-type colour. Now the um, the problem with that is that in Talon's Rembrandt, the um, which is the the reds I've got here, the light red is actually a proper scarlet red. But in almost every other brand, if it says light red, you're going to get this sort of um, a warm granulating red so when you're looking at your reds and deciding which ones to uh, 
to use for granulation, cadmium's sun granulation and then very strong granulation from those rich terracotta reds. Next up are the blues and they fall very strongly into granulating and non-granulating colours. So colours that don't granulate are going to be um, transparent colours like phthalo blues and Prussian blue and even indigo. These tend not to granulate. So the ones that granulate very strongly were the best known and the most strongly granulating of all is ultramarine. So here we'll have a look at that now. I've pretty much banned my students from using ultramarine in skies because the granulation with ultramarine is incredibly heavy. It's a beautiful colour and useful for many things, but um, especially if, you, if you've got a bit of a heavy hand like me and you'd really like to chuck the colour on, it's quite hard to get away with ultramarine in a sky. So there you can really see that granulation taking place. Um, other colours that granulate are cobalt, which is um, very close to... Uh, to ultramarine so you'll get granulation there as well you can see as we put it into those other colors you can see that granulation happening more strongly another color which granulates very heavily but is much more delicate so my favorite color probably is cerulean blue so um, that's the one i used in my um, camellia painting and i'm going to show you that as we go along and there's the cerulean blue so you can see the granulation in there and you'll notice that it's often only when you put another color with it that it really um, it really comes into its own so that's your blues which granulate so that would be cerulean cobalt and ultramarine of course there are um, other colors um, other types of blue than the ones I've got here there's dozens of them these are these are the most common ones I'm going through for you so we're going to move on to the last category and that's the earth colors now it's easier really with earth colours to, uh, to explore the ones that don't granulate because almost all earth colours granulate. So if something has got the name of burnt, um, burnt umber, burnt sienna, raw umber, raw sienna, um, if, if it says burnt or if it says ochre, it's very likely to granulate. Um, one that I've got along here which doesn't granulate would be the um, sepia. But you know, it wouldn't really be categorised as an earth colour anyway. But it is in the browns. This is the um, the red I was telling you about, the red oxide, which is often in other ranges called light red. So there's the red that granulates. Now the reason the earth colours granulate is because most of them are literally made from earth. So here's another one, raw umber. Um, a bit more of a delicate granulation with that one. And then I've got um, burnt sienna which is um, just up, it's just where those, those sort of warm reds tip into browns, so you've got burnt sienna as, there as well. And then one that very heavily granulates is burnt umber. So you can see the similar, similarities between the names here, burnt, raw, all of those things, ochres, so there we are, and there's your burnt umber. I'm just going to move this... Um, around a little bit because it may have just gone out of shot there you are so i hope you can see um, how beautiful these granulating colors are and how they're really really useful for getting texture in your paintings so now we know which colors granulate how do you use them in your paintings well let me show you a painting i did uh, this is my most recent painting at the time of filming this and it's a painting of a large white camellia flower um, I saw this flower when I was visiting um, a public garden with a friend and it was just so beautiful I thought I have to paint it. So how did I use granulating pigments to help this painting along? Well the first thing that I did was to use some granulating pigments in the background. So I did a, a wet on wet technique in the background. I've actually made um, a separate video about that. Um, I'll link to it up here, I'll put it in the information card and you can have a look at that one after this one if you like. So uh, I used those granulating pigments to uh, show texture in the background. So I kind of wanted the idea that there was um, something going on in the background, you know, perhaps leaves, perhaps other flowers, you know, other things going on, but I didn't want to be specific. So I just wanted that loose, soft background and I wanted some texture to it. Now, there are many, many ways of making textures. I'm gonna do a video series soon on different, um, different things you can do to create texture in watercolor painting, but probably one of the most basic and most simple is just to use granulating colors wet into wet. So the second thing that granulation is good for is just for enhancing other techniques. So on the leaves here you can see that um, I left a white area just while the paper was wet because I wanted to get some of that white highlight and shine to the leaves. 
Now, of course, I could have used any colour. This would have worked with a, any colour, any watercolour at all. However, by using granulating colours, in this case, um, a bit of cerulean blue in the in the paint mix, you can see that I, uh, as I zoom in, you know, you just you just get something a bit extra. It just it just sort of draws attention to the technique that you've used. So, if you're doing some kind of texture technique, this is a great way of drawing attention to it. And the third thing that granulation is great for is drawing attention to a colour and just making it more beautiful and more interesting. This is particularly useful for greys, um, browns, any colour that just could be a little bit dull by itself. I often use this actually, I've got a mix that I call a British Sea because the sea in Britain, on the coast of Britain, in most cases is not blue, it's kind of a dirty grey. Um, However, you know, if you just paint this, you know, if you're making a painting of a seascape and you just paint the sea grey, it's going to look absolutely horrible. So the way I get around that is I mix a grey that's got granulating blue pigments in so that when people look at the grey, it's still an accurate depiction. I don't want it to look like, you know, the Bahamas because it's not, it's England. Um, so so when, you, when you look at that grey, what you get is you see the little blue pigments sort of separately. So it's almost like pontillism, you know, when they used to put different colours next to each other, you know, they'd put uh, blue and yellow next to each other from a distance, it looked like green, but you had that kind of glow to it. Well, you can do the same with greys and browns with watercolour. So that although you've got a grey, um, when you sort of, when you look at it close up, it becomes such a much more interesting colour. So I use this technique on the petals of my flower in order to make those greys look far more interesting. At the beginning of this video, I sort of hooked you in with the promise of a bonus tip. So here it is. If you've stayed watching this video all the way to the end, thank you very much. And here's your bonus tip. Now it's really important when you apply a, um, a mix where you've mixed a colour from granulating pigments that you stir the paint. So I've got a little bit of video clip I'm gonna drop in here and I'll show you what I mean. So uh, what's happened in this mix, I've mixed yellow and blue together, but the blue I've used is cerulean and it's a heavily granulating colour. So what's happened is the, um, the, the, uh, the blue pigments have dropped to the bottom, so you get the impression that it's much more sort of yellow kind of green. Now if you're mixing greys and things, you can actually have your paint go pink or orange because all the blue sinks to the bottom. So it's really important that as you apply your paint, you each time you dip your brush in, you stir the paint because otherwise the paint will separate and you may find if you're just dipping your brush into the top of the puddle of paint you may find that you're applying a completely different colour to the one that you mixed. So if you're anything like me you've probably already forgotten which of the granulating colours because I've got a terrible I've got one of those artistic memories so I've put some links in the description below so you can see which are my favourite granulating colours. If you want to have a look at the uh, the finished version of that camellia painting I did you can hop over to my Facebook group it's got exactly the same name as this YouTube channel, so it's in the studio with Michelle Weber. So let me know in the comments if you, uh, if you like granulation in watercolours or if you find it a little bit hard to manage and a little bit frustrating. Do consider subscribing to my channel and you can watch another video right now.